Hello again and welcome to another Morning Glory video and today guys we will be doing another Warlord Wednesdays episode where we take a look at the game Bolt Action which is an absolutely fantastic World War II tabletop miniatures game and we will be continuing with some more tactics videos and what we will be doing is taking a look at heavy tanks because heavy tanks are cool and I really really like heavy tanks but they are a little bit tricky to make work in bolt action so we're going to be taking a look at that today now heavy tanks are very very cool in fact some of the coolest units for every faction in bolt action could be argued to be the heavy tanks you've got things like the tiger one absolute classic heavy tank unit for the germans then you've got the is2 you know that is just an absolute behemoth when you see it on the table you've got the churchill tank for the brits and the pershing for the americans there's all sorts of heavy tanks that are flying all over the place in bolt action but they can like i said they have a bit of a bad reputation in bolt action and the thing is is that people tend to say that they're not worth their points and from so you know that that is a pretty good argument because they are heavy investments <laughs> heavy tanks heavy investments but i personally think that heavy tanks are viable uh but you have to build around them you can't just take your normal sort of list and then try and squeeze a heavy tank into it because that's not really going to work and you're going to find yourself quickly outdiced, outmaneuvered and just potentially just just overwhelmed. Now the thing is that Warlord Games clearly think heavy tanks are cool as well because they give them away in lots of starter sets. So the thing is you can't expect to not face them. In fact, it's pro probably a good chance that you will face heavy tanks for two reasons. Like I said, one, they're cool as hell. But two, Warlord do give them away. I mean, you've got the Battle of Berlin starter set, which gives the Soviet player two IS-2s to start with. I mean, that's insane. You've then got the just German SS starter set, which is actually a really good starter set. Um, and that comes with the Tiger 1. You know, and so there's loads of examples. And there's church was like uh, a part of um, British staff sets in places as well so the thing is is that heavy tanks are prevalent in the game and a lot of players will take them because they're just cool and so you need to have a way of being able to make that heavy tank work in your army and you need to try and have a way of being able to beat heavy tanks because they are pretty difficult you know they are if you're not prepared for one they can be pretty crazy units to face so that's sort of everything i want to just lay out sort of get the lay of the land and sort of start with the video let's now take a dive in and take a look at what really defines a heavy tank within bolt action so first thing is essentially uh is is its armor value that is truly what defines a heavy tank in bolt action now i, I won't go into the specifics of how armor values work uh but essentially a light tank uh, an armored vehicle which it could include Things like an armored uh, an armored car, like a fully enclosed armored car, or even an early early or interwar tank will have an armor value of seven plus. Uh, and then a light tank will typically have an armor value of eight plus. A medium tank will have an armor value of nine plus. And then heavy tanks, by definition, uh, have an armor value of ten plus. Which means that in order to try and damage that tank. When you're rolling to penetrate its armor, you have to roll a 10 on a D6. Now, obviously, that sounds impossible, right? But essentially, you you, you know, anti-tank guns will have modifiers. So a medium anti-tank gun will have a plus 5 modifier. So if you hit with your medium anti-tank gun, you get plus 5 to your D6 dice roll. So if you would need to get a 5, plus 5 to meet the armor value which would get you a glancing hit or what's called superficial damage and i know i said i wouldn't explain the armor values but i basically just kind of done it there so but action is pretty simple game actually so it's quite easy to explain things in depth um so there you go so heavy tanks you can imagine like a medium anti tank gun at long range is then going to start having less penetration value and so a medium anti tank gun which is probably like the staple for a lot of armies will only really deal damage and even then superficial damage to a heavy tank on its front armor on a six plus so medium -man tank guns are not super effective against the likes of a tiger tank uh, but then the thing other thing that tends to differentiate heavy tanks from medium tanks is the kind of gun that they're given so either you'll find that 
the uh, so for example if you're facing like the Germans either you'll find that they the Tiger one will get a super heavy anti-tank gun as its main armament which means that it not only has a fantastic range fantastic uh, arm penetration value but it also uh, has a really good high explosive value as well it means it does a th even though it's a dedicated anti-tank gun it has a three inch explosive template which is really good that's actually bigger than a, a medium mortar you know, you're getting up to scale of like a of like a medium howitzer there. So that's why you know heavy super heavy tanks can be really potent. So either they've got a super heavy anti tank gun, or they'll have a regular like heavy anti tank gun, but it'll have a special rule. So, for example, the IS two has a special rule where even though it's only got a heavy anti tank gun, it still gets a three inch blast template because it has essentially an HE shell option. So there you go. Now, um, so heavy tanks are big units you're going to struggle to hide them they've got big armor which is going to be struggle to pen be penetrated by anything other than seriously dedicated heavy anti-tank weapons and not only that they pack a wallop as well i mean you will be the main gun is is is, is a big deal but then most of these heavy tanks can also have like three machine guns strapped to them as well you know at the very least they'll be coming with two but easily they'll have access to a pintle mount they'll have access to an extra one so they just pack a lot of firepower, uh, but their main drawback is they are expensive. And this is why a lot of players don't like them because they are, you know, typically like the Tiger, a Tiger, just regular veterancy is 395 points. You add an extra machine on there, it's 410 points. That is literally 40, like 41% of your points for your game. That's almost half your army. So it's really, it's big, man. It's like... You know, it's more impactful, if you compare this to like 40k, it's more impactful than bringing a Bane Blade, because that's only like 25% of your army, right? So, it is tricky to get things like heavy tanks to work, because they are such a point of investment. But, some I personally believe that some nations can make them work better than others. And I also think that any nation can get it to work, uh, if you build your list around it. So, for example, if we explore the first option... I think the Russians can really make heavy tanks work because normally the disadvantage of taking a heavy tank means you have less infantry. But the Russians get a free 12-man infantry squad every game. That's one of their national traits. It's like, you know, like being Cadian or Mordian or something like that in, in 40k. It's one of their national traits. They get a free 12-man inexperienced squad. So straight away, that's like having you know, an extra, that, that offsets the point of the of the tank itself and offsets the, the lack of infantry that you'll be having. And don't forget those Soviet infantry, they can easily go from being inexperienced to being green and all that kind of, uh, being um, regular because they've got the green special rule. So the Soviets can really make use of them. Uh, but like I said, other factions can also really make use of them, principally things like, you know, the Germans can take advantage of them, especially if you, because uh, the Germans do have access to quite the plethora of inexperienced units. Ones which don't have a bunch of just horrible um, uh, rules that make them you know, inexperienced and not worth taking. So for example, you have things like Creed Marine squads, which are just straight up inexperienced, but they don't have any like disadvantages of, of being like shirkers or anything like that. Likewise, you can take Luftwaffe Field Division squads, which again, you know, they can take, uh, they're inexperienced, but they haven't got anything like shirkers. I mean, it's a little dark, but you can take, you know, Hitler Youth squads, which again, uh, they have the, the, you know, they have the ability to get up rated to fanatics, which is pretty insane. And all these units are dirt cheap. Uh, and I mean, likewise, you then have access to things. I mean, you might say, oh, but I don't want to take those. They're going to have limited access to weapon options. Well, then you have things like Volk's Grenadier squads, which are like technically inexperienced, but they can, they do have the green rule, which means they can get upgraded to regulars and even veterans if you get lucky. Uh, and they have access to loads and loads of just uh, of assault rifles, which Germans love taking, you know, love the assault rifles. So Volk's Grenadiers and Tiger tanks actually go together really well. And they're kind of thematic because it kind of just shows it's late war. You know, the Germans are bringing out the Tiger tanks and the Germans are bringing out the Volksgrenadiers. It's late war. Um, 
you know, so the Germans are one of the other units that I feel can can really, really sort of take advantage of it, because you can just take dirt cheap units. I mean, if you really want to go down a certain route, you can actually take things like Ostruppen Squad, which uh, essentially like they're 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 they're, they're just it's difficult. The Ostruppen are like uh, conscripts from the conquered territories of of Germany, especially like the Eastern Front. So you'll find that it includes lots of things like. Um, sort of Georgians and Ukrainians and white Russians and stuff, that's all the history behind it. Now they're really cheap because you can, they're, they're only like five, four, four points a man. So considering a regular troop is 10 points a man, an off troop is only four points a man. Now they can basically be given like no equipment apart from like maybe a light machine gun and a submachine gun and a Panzerfaust between the whole squad. But they're so cheap because they're shirkers, which means they, they, all, they have to do an order test all the time even if they haven't got any pins but the thing is that like you might simply be just be having your off in there to just hold an objective dirt cheap and they don't need to do anything but just sit in a bit of cover and never really fire the gun and that's fine they're just a dice in the bag so that really is one way you can do it I mean, you can literally add an off and squad into your army for 20 points it's probably one of the cheapest units you can do it with so that is how you get heavy tanks to work with, you know, with especially with Soviets, especially with Germans. Now, with other factions, I'll be honest, I haven't got as much experience with that. So I'm going to ask anyone who's watching this video to put it down in the comments section. As like American, and as an American player, or as a British player, how do you get your heavy tanks in the field? What inexperienced options do you have? Put that down in the comments section, because this series of videos is very, very much noob friendly. I'm a noob when it comes to action. I'm sort of doing these videos just sort of documenting my journey down this road. But that's where I find, what well, that's what I find with like heavy tanks. I think they're really, really cool. And I, I, I'm gonna be using a Tiger One in my, in my army going forward. And I'm gonna build around it. I'm gonna have essentially like a late war German army where I'm gonna have loads of, of, of like Volksgrenadiers and other inexperienced troops that are gonna run around with a few regulars and a few hardened veterans. And yeah, it's just gonna be that's going to be the the way I run the army, and I'm going to have this this big tank that is going to be kind of a linchpin of the army. Now, here's the other thing, just to mention with heavy tanks. And the thing is, is that a lot of people, like I said, will say they're not worth it. And we've talked about how you can make them feasible, but there's sort of a, an un there's like a soft element. It's like an un un sort of un an intangible element, which is if it's a bit like people say bot action in general is an infantryman's game and that tanks aren't really worth it and that is kind of true but then if your opponent brings a tank and you don't have one it feels like a massive disadvantage you feel like you're facing an uphill battle because non-tank based anti-tank can be quite tricky to get to work so like non-based anti-tank you're looking at things like medium anti-tank guns you know, you're looking at things like anti-tank rifles or, um, yeah, like that's kind of like, that's kind of like it, like some sort of heavy howitzer or whatever. But the point is like, the thing I found with those kind of, those kind of weapons is due to their lack of maneuverability, when they get into a duel with a tank, it tends to be on the tank's terms. So, you know, you might have like a quarter pounder, sorry, I always got the quarter pounder, a 17 pounder locking down an area like a super heavy anti-tank gun, which is great. But if the enemy just never engages with it, it's just, not, it's not doing anything. But that tank can maneuver around and it can still contribute to the game. So that's what I think about, that's what I, that's what I, that's why I'm not personally a big fan of like semi-static or static anti-tank weapons, I feel like tanks are really good uh, because they can both play the anti-tank game and play the anti-infantry game. Now, um, the thing is when it comes to countering heavy tanks, they, they're sort of, it's kind of tricky. I've yet to see a heavy tank get popped in one shot. I've yet to see it happen. Just, to the just because of the nature of bolt action games, you know, you get that hit. And even if you're shooting a heavy anti-tank gun, you know, you still need like a five plus to do like superficial damage over long range. You know, it's, t it's tricky. Um, so the thing is with heavy tanks is you almost, the way you want to try and 
beat them is you want to try and uh, either sort of control them and you know th sort of th you know threaten them to, to make your opponent play them in a way he doesn't want to play it or you have to just get pins on them okay so the thing with uh with like the first option is if you haven't got a heavy and if let's say you haven't got a heavy anti you haven't got a heavy tank or you haven't got a heavy anti tank gun you've got to or you sorry you haven't got your own tank but you have got like a heavy anti tank gun that's that's how you start controlling your opponent. So you lock down an A of the board and like, look, I've got a heavy anti tank gun. I've I, you know I've got a flak A here. I've got a super heavy anti tank gun. You can bring your IS two over here, but I've got my thing ready on ambush. And the moment your tank trundles in the view, I'm gonna blow it. I'm gonna launch a shell at it, and I'm gonna have a really good chance of popping it. And so your opponent has to go somewhere with this tank he may not want to go, or he has to risk that ambush. So. You've also got things like um, you might have, if you're facing Germans and you know the enemy's got a Tiger 1, you might be like, okay, well, I'm going to put a Bazooka or I'm going to put a Piat team in a Jeep or Universal Carrier. And so my opponent might have this anti-tank, this big, big, sorry, this big, big heavy tank. But uh, if I can drive a Jeep on, end, end of the turn, jump out with the Panzer, uh, the, the Panzer Buster and just hit it in the side armor, that makes things a lot easier. You know, I'm hitting a heavy tank, side armor, within reasonable range. You're looking at only needing a 4 plus to get superficial damage with something like a bazooka, which is pretty important. So, again, that's a threat that your opponent, and your opponent, and your, the person using the heavy tank isn't going to want to just let it get popped. He's not going to be reckless with it. His natural inclination is going to be to use it as a, as a, as a viable resource, because it is. And so as a result, he's going to probably be a bit cagey with it because either, and it's kind of a catch-22 because it's like either he's cagey with it, at which point he's not getting full utility out of it so it's being less efficient, or he goes all in, balls to the wall with it, which could risk it and blow it up, and then it's just a huge loss for his army because he's put so much into it. So um, that's the thing. Uh, so that's how you can control it. Um, you know, and that's how you can sort of, or like I said, you can pin it out. So... A lot of the time, heavy you know heavy heavy tanks still suffer the penalty for moving and shooting like everyone else. So, that a lot of the time the opponent will get them set up in a nice position and then start blasting away at them and then move them as and when they need them. But if you can keep him moving, then it makes a huge difference. So, for example, if you've got a heavy mortar or like a medium howitzer or something like that and you're just dropping indirect fire shells in on this thing, then it's, the opponent has got to keep moving that tank. Otherwise, he's going to start getting hit. And if he gets hit, then he's going to start taking pins. And, you know, there's nothing like... And I did this in my game uh, against, this, against, uh, against a tank recently, where I got a hit with the uh, with the he and i put three pins on that heavy tank and then my opponent had to had to, had to try and rally it because he couldn't do anything with it couldn't do anything with his is too so it's really like pinning out or just putting like three or four pins on an enemy heavy tank will really really start just jeopardizing because even if he even if he gets the order off he's even if he even if he has two pins and he gets the order off then he's at minus one because he's still got a pin on him so it's yeah it is really you know heavy tanks do have their counters and that's why some people don't like them but like but like i said if you've got a heavy tank and the and the enemy doesn't or if you're facing a heavy tank and you don't have one it really changes the dynamic of the game and you will feel like you're having an uphill battle and your opponent will have the advantage and it will be up to you starting on the back front to try and wrestle that advantage back so anyway that's my thoughts and ramblings and general just probably total misconceptions but my ideas and thoughts around heavy tanks but what do you guys think about the beasts of the battlefield let me know down in the comment section below before we end today's video i want to say of course a huge thank you to the patreon supporters of the channel it's thanks to my patreon supporters that i'm able to try out this new game system called action and i've been absolutely loving it so a huge thank you to all you absolutely fantastic just just, just great. You're just great people. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to overdo it. I'm not going to say anything that isn't heartfelt. Uh, it's, you guys know that I appreciate it. So massive thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave lots and lots of comments. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.